demonstration, I'm going to show you the basics of fair isle knitting. So I'm going to demonstrate two techniques, stranding and weaving in. I'm going to demonstrate them on both right side and wrong side rows. I have two colours, white and this wine colour. And I'm going to start by joining in my wine at the beginning of the row. I'm going to work the first three stitches using white and then three stitches using wine and repeat that across the row. So at the beginning of the row here, I'm going to lay the wine across the right hand needle. And as I go to knit, it catches the wine into the work at the side there. I'm then going to work two more white stitches and then I'm going to work three of the wine. Now in Fair Isle, when you have a block of three or less stitches in one colour, you can strand the unused colour across the back of the work. So I'm going to work three white, three wine, three white, three wine and so on across the row, stranding the colour that I'm not using across the back of the work. Now my white is going to be my dominant colour and that means that I pick that up from on top. My wine is my secondary colour and I'm going to pick that up from underneath. And that system of over and under will stop my yarns from tangling. So I'm picking up my wine from underneath. I'm working three stitches. Dropping that back down. Picking up the white from on top, letting that just strand across the back of those three stitches and working three stitches in white. Picking up the wine from underneath and working three stitches, dropping the wine down, picking up the white from on top and working three stitches. And as you can see, if I use this over and under system at the end of the row, the yarns remain untangled. Keep the stitches on the right hand needle spread out to the correct width all the time that you're working to ensure that the strands at the back sit flat and don't bunch up. Okay so I'm on my last three stitches now of white and on the very last stitch just to make the end really neat and secure I'm going to work that last stitch using both yarns. Remember that that then is one stitch, two strands of yarn, but one stitch. Okay, so as I turn back, I'm going to repeat that row, but with the wrong side facing. So just make sure at the beginning, yarn's untangled, move my white towards the top, my wine colour towards the bottom here. So as I pick them up, they will remain untangled. Pick up and work three, pull nice and firmly there, three cream stitches, three wine stitches. Wine from underneath, so drop that down, white from on top, so drop that over the top of the needle, three burgundy or wine, three white, three wine, 
making sure the stitches on the right hand needle are spread to the correct width. Just make sure you do that, otherwise you could get puckering. Three white, three wine, and so on to the end of the row. It's an over and under system that you must keep consistent across the whole row. Okay, we're getting now towards the end of that pearl row. So like I did on the right side row, I'm going to work that last stitch using both yarns. Pull nice and firmly, and you should then find you get a really neat edge to your ferrule knitting. So the front side looks like that. And the wrong side looks like that. You can see the strands across the back. Next, I'm going to show you how to weave a yarn across the back of the work. So you would need to weave a yarn when there are more than three stitches in a block of colour. And this is to avoid long strands at the back of the work. So I'm going to show you this on a right side row and on a wrong side row. So keeping our white as our dominant colour and our wine as our secondary colour, I'm going to work 11 stitches in white, then I'm going to work 11 in wine and 11 in white. And across those 11, I will weave a few times. So. I shouldn't work more than three stitches without weaving. So I've worked three, I'm now going to weave the wine across the back of the work. So I put my needle into the next stitch, knitwise, because I'm on a right side row. I'm going to take the yarn that I'm carrying or weaving, pick it up from underneath the working colour, place it over the cross of the needles, knit the stitch, but just make sure that the needle passes underneath the secondary colour so it doesn't grab it and put it to the front. All you get is the white stitch. Then as you release the stitch off and keep hold, if you can, of the secondary colour here, as you go to knit the second stitch, it holds the yarn in again. And it's called a full weave. Okay, so I could work another two or three stitches and then weave again. So needle into stitch, yarn over the cross of the needles I'm carrying, knit the stitch, bring the new stitch through, drop the old stitch and the carried yarn off to the back and as you knit the next stitch, the colour you're weaving weaves in or holds in again at the back of the work. So I think there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I've done my 11 stitches and I've carried the wine yarn across the back. Now I'm going to swap. So my secondary colour now is going to be the colour which is going, going to um, be worked with and the white is going to be carried. So still picking up the secondary colour from underneath, I'm going to knit three stitches. Now, although white is the dominant colour, when it's carried, it must come from under, otherwise the technique won't work. So regardless of what it's done across the row so far, when it's being woven, it must be picked up from underneath. So it's picked up from under the working colour, across the needle points as before, around with the working colour, bring the wine stitch through, work one more stitch and the white will carry across the back of the work. Okay, let's do that again. Let's 
just check how many stitches I've got there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more in the burgundy or the wine colour. Then I'm going to resort back to the simply white yarn being on top, the wine being on the bottom, and the wine being carried again. So one, two, three stitches. Carry the wine. Carry the wine again. I want to make sure that on the last stitch, I can knit that last stitch using both yarns to again make that really secure at the end of the work. Okay, so the back of the work looks like this. This is where the weaves have happened here. Okay, on a wrong side row, wrong side row weave then. I'm going to keep the stitches in the same sequence. So I'm going to work no more than three stitches. I'm going to work three. Then I'm going to weave the wine. So the colour that's being woven goes over the cross of the needles. Hold it if you can up here, high up. So that as you go to knit, or purl rather, as you go to purl, you bring the new stitch through, you drop the stitch you've worked and the yarn that you're weaving off to the back, but you bring the yarn that you're weaving forward and purl again and you get that full weave happen. Okay, so I'm going to work another couple of stitches and then weave again so the yarn that's been woven comes from beneath lower down than the working colour very important otherwise it won't work okay and now we're going to swap so I'm going to pick up my secondary colour still from underneath But when I weave the white, the white must come from under. It's beneath the wine. Okay, then for this final section, I'm going to change back to white being on top and wine being under. Very last stitch again, I'm going to purl using both yarns. Okay, so that is your weaving in on a wrong side and right side row. That's what it looks like on the back. You can see the weaves here and here. Okay, and here. Um, and as you can see, the yarns are still untangled. Okay, so that's your weaving in and stranding, which are the basics of all your feral knitting.